Welcome to Q&A practice. Let's start out with defense attorney. Ready? Here we go. And you said the prom. Can you tell us about the prom? The Best Buddies prom was held at Babson College. It was run by Best Buddies International. They had the prom for any student chapter in Massachusetts who wanted to attend. For a fee, we could buy tickets and take students to the Best Buddies prom. And what would happen at the prom? It was a typical dance. Student got dressed up. They went. They had a DJ. They had pizza. They had music. They did different kind of activities. Just they crowned a king and queen group of different pure buddies and buddies who were together. So it was more of just kind of a fun social event where kids danced and it was a really good time. What was that like for the kids? Wonderful. I mean, it was the kind of event where for many of the students who I worked with who had developmental issues, they might not get the chance to go to a prom. So this was a chance to go and have a great time with your friends from school, celebrate, and you know, really just be in a great social event. What are the exceptions, expectations for the students, the students without disabilities who participate? I mean, do they just go and eat the free pizza and hang out with their friends and leave? No, the expectation of all members of the club is that you're there to help create an inclusive environment for students with developmental issues. The idea is that you're there to participate in the social event, behave respectfully, be part of the team of the Cambridge Ringe and Latin Best Buddies. Students are expected to have a good time and be respectful. Other than seeing him in this picture, do you remember Jahar? I do. What do you remember about him? Like all students in the club, he was kind. He was respectful. He came to the events. He was nice to every student that he encountered. He was a good member of the club. And do you remember anything about how he was interacting with the students who had intellectual challenges? Yeah, he was very nice to them. Did he ask you for a college recommendation? He did not. Is that something that some of the students do? Yes, and as far as attending the events, who pays for the students to attend? It was funded by students. Typically, they would pay for tickets. We also had a grant that we got to pay for some of the events, and the school funded the bus that took us to the Best Buddies prom. Is there anything? At some point you learned that Jahar was involved in the marathon bombing, correct? Yes. And was the Jahar, was that consistent with the Jahar that you knew? Objection. Overruled, you may answer. I don't believe that it was. The student that I worked with in my club is the student that I am speaking on today. And could you imagine that person? Objection. No, go ahead. You can follow up. Can you imagine that person committing the marathon bombing when you knew him in 2011? No, I have nothing further. Just a second, Your Honor. Nothing, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Call, thank you. You may step down. Your Honor, I wonder if we could take the lunch break early. Let me just see you briefly. General a test. No, just general orientation. Yes, next would be Eric Traub and then Kevin Roche and then the ADK. How long do you think Bezzy will be? Not terribly long, maybe 45 minutes, but we have a legal matter. There's a motion respecting this business of whether or not putting in the SAMs opens the door to ESPN. Okay, so we'll take that up. Your Honor, for the record, it's not a matter of putting in the SAMs that opens up the door to ESPN. Since these are now all being published, I think it's important that the record reflect that the argument that if the defense wants to put on a portrayal of what life in ADX will be like, then the government is entitled to make sure it's not a one-sided misleading portrayal. All right, I don't want to. I was just asking for an early lunch break. I just want to know what's coming, so he'll be on and off today, yes, because I assume he's remote and he'll go back to wherever he came from, and then that's all we had planned for today. You won't get to these others. That's what I call the ADX. We're not exactly sure what our planning is for the rest of them. We're going to see how Mr. Bezzy, these four, I see, okay, all right, thanks. And then for tomorrow, just to get a preview, is there a tomorrow? 
Yes, there's a tomorrow and it will probably be debated with the court, but there's tomorrow we have two witnesses, potential witnesses left tomorrow, and that would, would be Vogel, Sang, and Prajean. All right, that is the end of that transcript. another one that we've been working on. And we will start with the plan of attorney. Ready? Here we go. All right, when he said that, what did you do? I dash into the street and I see there is another gas station on our side of the street, so I run across the street. Fortunately, there's no car driving on the street at that time, so I can see the lights from that gas station was on, but I'm not sure the gas station is open or locked. So I was like praying, please open, please somebody be there. So I got to the door of the gas station. I opened the door. It opened. The attendant was there. I begged him to call 911 and he didn't get me at the first time. And I just say, please call 911, please. When you told him to please call 911, did you say at stay at the front door? What did you do? Yeah, I stayed at the front door, but I tried to lower down my body so they cannot see me through the window. Did you look back to see if they were following? No, why not? I don't know. It just feels like I'm very terrified. It feels like I was very worried about them in front of me. I feel like if I don't look back there, then maybe they won't follow me, something like that. I didn't have too many reason in my mind after that time. When you asked for a 911 call to be made, was one made? Did the attendant call 911? Yeah, after a few seconds, he called 911, and as he was calling 911, what did you do? I went to the side of, they have a storage room behind the desk, all right, so did you go behind him into a storage room? Yeah, I go behind him, the storage room. Why did you do that? I'm worried about they were coming in front of me. I just want to hide in case they come into the store. They cannot see me. They cannot what? They cannot find me as you were hiding in the back. Do you know if there was a call that was placed to 911? Yes, I can hear that. At some point, is the phone given to you? Yes, the attendant gave me the phone later, a few seconds later. After the phone call is made, do the police arrive? Yeah, the police arrive quickly. When I was still talking on the phone, the attendant knocked on the door of the storage room and told me that the police is here. Your Honor, if I could have the witness look at Exhibit 744, which I believe is already in evidence. All right, Mr. Ming, do you recognize what Exhibit 744 is? I can say on the left side is a Shell gas station. On the right side is a mobile gas station, which I go into. Right, so this is on the left side is the Shell that you were at, and you ran across the street to the mobile on the right yeah and run across the street and just if we could have 745 brought up please which i also believe is already in evidence and do you recognize exhibit 745 yes okay and what is that it's a mobile gas station where the attendant called 911 your honor this may be a good time to break just because i was going to play the video and audio attached Yes, okay, so we'll take the lunch break, ladies and gentlemen, at re and resume at 2 o'clock. Do we have the witness? Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mr. Ming. Good afternoon. And good afternoon, Ms. Zhang. For the record, Your Honor, Ms. Zhang is seated next to Mr. Ming to help with interpretations this afternoon as well. Mr. Ming, we stopped for the lunch break when you were looking at some photos at both the Shell gas station and the mobile gas station. Do you remember that? Yes. 
in addition to having a chance to view those before, did you also have a chance to watch the video from the Shell gas station and also the mobile gas station? Yes. And are those fair and accurate videos of what you did that day? Yes. Okay, and in, in addition to that, have you had a chance to listen to the 911 call that was placed initially by the clerk in the mobile gas station, but at some point you actually speak on it, right? Yes, right. And have you had a chance to listen to that 911 call? Yes. And is it a fair and accurate recording of what was said that day? Yes. And your honor, for the record, I would like to move into evidence exhibit 752, which is actually a composite of the videos as well as the audio from the 911 call overlaid where it's appropriate. Is there any objection? No. All right, that will conclude our Q&A practice.